I've got so much of this program. Um, life skills, huge. Um, training, maybe on training days, just forget really what we've ever learned. But this has had a major impact on my life, my work, everything I do has been huge, really made a massive difference. Even within Gwalia, we, you know, we have meetings and I talk to other members of staff who are coming on board and coming to Frontline Futures, and they've been really, I am really enthusiastic about it, as you can tell. I am excited about the project, and I hope it goes from strength to strength, because it's given me so much as housing officer. And I know we've got housing officers waiting to be next, which is great, because i got staff members who are desperate to come on this course. My comfort zone was literally there. <laughs> And I've done so much since I've spoken in front of team meetings, which I wouldn't have done before. It's given me more confidence to do my job. I, I just totally changed the way I've worked. So I'd say do it. It's not comfortable, and some of it is uncomfortable, but it's pushed me that bit far, which I would never have done. Our change challenge was to make sure that the antisocial behaviour team and the neighbourhood housing team work more closely together and do more joint tasks. Um, we were working a bit in silos before, so it was to learn a bit more about each other's roles. Um, ultimately to become one team. But the main thing that sticks in my head is the Oscar model where we try to coach the team and make sure we took all their views on board before we kind of started implementing the change challenge. So I feel more that I can encourage a team to make more decisions for themselves and also to push things back to residents where it's not really a landlord's role. Still be helpful but maybe not get over involved in things we shouldn't be getting involved in. It's especially in antisocial behaviour with the more minor complaints to give people the confidence to deal with those complaints themselves rather than bring the landlord in and blow it up to something massive and maybe then repair, you know, damage a relationship that can't be restored. Um, for me, I think it is about managing people's expectations for residents, not getting involved in everything. And for staff, I used to be a bit of a fixer and would do everything for them. So I tend to push back a bit more now. Even if I say, you know, you do this email yourself, I'll check it. Whereas before I would have just done it and, you know, put it in their name. So it's made, it's freed up a lot more of my time to do things I should be doing. My change challenge was slightly different to, to others in that it was more of a personal challenge for me. Um, seeing the, uh, the items that we were going to learn as part of, uh, as part of the course. Uh, I recognised that I wasn't quite there on a lot of those, so I challenged myself to bring myself up to that mark to identify what, where I was falling short in, in, the, in the learning and to bring myself through by the end of the course. For me, I think it was about taking a step back and thinking, preparing, planning, rather than acting first and seeing the results, so a bit of a more measured approach. Um, certainly the tools, I mean, where, where they're giving you models, um, ways to sort of bring the, bring the tools into day-to-day -day operational use, um, they were really handy. And, and for me as well, as confidence, skills, you know, you, you have these tools in your pocket then, you're able to use them as and when you need them. As a mission, I suppose, I'd like to see others in the business become involved uh, and, and to embrace it as well. It's a proactive approach uh, rather than a reactive for me. Um, for me, it was just about um, overall changes. So looking at something and rather than doing it the same way, actually looking at different ways of being able to do it, and that's made a massive difference while I uh, do my day-to-day -day role. The approach I have on things, the reaction I'm getting back off tenants and staff, it's just about wording things differently as well. So rather than knocking and, and saying, why haven't you done this? It's actually asking the question, is there a reason? And leaving it for them to actually say what's going on in their life. And it's building a, a massive picture, which I wouldn't have got otherwise. For me, it's given me more confidence. So because I'm actually running this change project, it's made me realise that I can actually plan something and I can go and speak to other teams and get answers, whereas before you wait to be told what to do, now it's actually looking at what I can do and what changes I can make. Mm -hmm. So in, in that way it's really been really positive, just a lot more interactive. There's a lot more that goes into it. And whereas other training programmes, as good as they might be, you tend to a month later forget what you've learned. With this it's something that you can use day on, day you know, day in, day out. Um, and you can see the changes as you're using it. I say do it. And I have been doing that even without being asked to. Because I'm speaking to people and they're saying about how they're sick of hand-holding and saying, you know, policies and procedures that, you know, a lot of people do struggle with, I have said that this project, it looks at all of that. It looks at making tenants less dependent, but actually making them independent so they can go and do things. It's not just about running away from them and doing nothing. It's about showing them how to do it for themselves and giving you ways of convincing them that that's something that's going to work for them. Now, rather than just saying this is what you need to do, 
is actually talking to them and getting them to realise what they need to do for themselves. And sometimes it wasn't even what maybe I would have thought would be best for them. But it works out best. My change challenge was all about changing our pets policy, um, especially for older people that are in living in flats and sheltered accommodation. Um, there's a lot of research out there to suggest that pets um, are good for people's health. You know, it helps with isolation, keeps them physically active. But for us, we struggle sometimes to let some of our accommodation because we have to skip people on the shortlist that do have pets that don't really want to part with them. I've depended a lot on um, Cotter and Cohen's um, ideals. I think I've said their names right, but it's all about the heart of change. So see, feel, change. So if you can make people see what the problem is by um, making them feel it, and that's by using um, real case um, stories, then they're more likely to be motivated to change um, and, you know, Put, put forward some actions to make a difference. It was really good, especially for my own personal development. Um, I've learned a lot about myself, um, particularly that I shouldn't always try and be a fixer. Um, you know, use of coaching techniques as well has been um, really useful. I'm definitely as well um, taking away some of the learning styles. I know I'm a reflector, which means I probably take longer to make decisions, but um, I like to also see more action. So I'm, I'm going to try not to reflect too much um, and I'm definitely going to encourage our tenants to be more independent as well. My change was um, around changing just one simple process. Really, really simple actually, looking back. So simple, I didn't think it was a big enough change project, but the impact that it had, or will have, once it's fully implemented, would be quite big. So um, where it came from is I went on holidays, um, somebody called up with an antisocial behaviour call, customer services took the call, um, and they emailed me the complaint. I was obviously off. More complaints just kept coming in, kept coming in, and they just kept emailing me directly. They weren't forwarding it to anybody else. So the time I got back, which was nearly three weeks later, the tenants had handed in their notice, and um, I put in a letter of complaint because I hadn't been dealt with. Um, so literally, the only little change that we needed to do was to copy in our business support coordinator for the area for any anti-social behavioural call. I think where we blipped, to be honest, we're going to have to go back and, and, and approach this again. But we met with the team manager for the particular team that took the initial call. We met with them um, and discussed like our case studies, so the, what I described to you, what, what resulted in handing in a notice and a complaint against us. Um, so quite a big uh, impact of just not getting the, the actual message across to who it needed to go across to. He bought into that and said, right, you know, what are we going to look at? How, what would be the easiest thing to change and make it, you know, so this doesn't happen again? So initially, there was some of the team then who were doing it correct, copying in that one extra person. Others weren't. So we realised there was no buy-in from the rest of the team because he's just gone back and said, right, we're doing this from now. There was no, like, back into it. There was no buy-in. There was nothing from the heart. So that's the main thing that I've actually concentrated on because, to be fair, if we hadn't have had this training then I would I would have just left it they're not listening it's the same old you know we've asked them to do something they're not doing it um let's just kind of forget it and move on to something else or try and think of another solution but the solution is actually there we just need them to see why they're not doing it or just to put to get that heart and get that feeling as to why right this is really important it's just trying to go back with a different approach and I think if I hadn't done this course I would have just gone the usual, they're not listening, they're not doing it.